So I tried a new 3D modeling software Plasticity that is completely changing the way you and I do 3D modeling. The craziest thing is that you don't even need to worry about topology. Check this out, I can just merge two objects and run a bevel flawlessly. What's even crazier is that I can move that object and everything adapts to itself. There are so many cool features to talk about but before we begin the video it's really important to mention that I'm not getting paid to make this video. However, I did get the software for free, which I'm very grateful for. But rest assured, all of the opinions in the video are my very own and are unbiased. It's also worth mentioning that I have over 7 years of experience in Blender, while with Plasticity, I've only spent about a month. So it's fair to say that I'm not using the software to its fullest potential. And if I say anything wrong about something in the video, please let me know in the comments down below. Before we get to all of the fun parts of the software like the features, it's important to know how this stuff works. So please hold your horses and bear with me as we go through how modeling differs in Plasticity. What's different with Plasticity is that it doesn't require the use of topology. See, in majority of the modeling programs like Blender and Maya use the method polygonal modeling in which every object is made up of faces, which you can think of as pixels of an image. The higher they are, the more detailed the image can be and the lower they are, the less detailed the image will be. Now a face is made up of three or more edges and an edge is made up by connecting two vertices. We can move around these faces, edges and vertices to create any object. It might all sound very really complicated at first, which actually is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it's not really as complicated as it sounds once you get the hang of it, but also because we have a lot of techniques and modifiers to make, to make our lives easier. We can start working from a primitive object like cubes, spheres and cylinders and work our way up to adding more details. We can model a low poly version of an object and make it smoother and rounder using the subdivision surface modifier. For symmetrical objects, we only need to model one part of the object and we can mirror that using the mirror modifier. To bend an object, we can use the simple deform modifier. To create an array of objects, we can use the array modifier and there are so many more. But what can be difficult in polygonal modeling is learning to use good topology which means a number of things but mostly while modeling you generally want to use faces no more or less than four vertices which are called quads, have a good amount of face density and maintain an edge flow where parts need to deform and bend. Otherwise you can get some really janky and horrible looking results. <laughs> While with plasticity it's not the case, you mostly work with solids and curves and there is no need or option to place vertices. All of this is possible because it uses a different modeling method called CAD which stands for crunchy and delicious. <laughs> which actually stands for computer aided design. Now CAD modeling isn't something new, it's been here for a very long time, but it has only been used for engineering, manufacturing and 3D printing uses cases, use cases mostly because it's very parametric, technical and not so user friendly to use. Well, actually, any 3D modeling program is hard to wrap your head around, especially when you are beginning to learn it. But from what I've heard, CAD modeling wasn't really meant to be used by artists, but more for engineering and real world cases. Until now, all of that changes with plasticity. It has the features of any CAD modeling program, but it's built to be used by artists. And it's very user friendly and easy to use. The reason CAD works so well is that it because is that it is that Never had a dreams that that you um you had you 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 could you do the reason CAD works so well is that because it uses some really complex math calculations that my brain can't support. <laughs> <laughs> I am not really a math guy, you know. Just to clear things up, every 3D program or any program at all uses math calculations to do things. Even when doing the simplest things as moving around an object, there are math calculations done under the hood. In a polygonal modeling software, a sphere is made up using polygons that can be moved around. While in a CAD modeling program, a sphere is a representation of the math that makes up a sphere if that makes sense. 
The object is only converted to polygons when we want to export it in a format like OBJ to use in a different software. Now let's get to the fun part and talk about the awesome features of plasticity. One of the things I like the most about this software is that I can quickly merge two objects and run a bevel flawlessly. Whereas if I had to do the same in Blender, I first have to clean all of this mess up and minimize the use of endgons as much as I can. A little longer than a few minutes later. A lot of the times it can get really complicated and sometimes you even need to buy third-party add-ons to fix this stuff. After doing a boolean, I can add a bevel and still move those faces afterwards. And if I wanted to, I can even get rid of the boolean. How cool is that? With all of that being said, it doesn't mean that you can get away without learning topology. Learning to use good topology is an essential skill and the, and the sooner you learn it, the better it will be. By having a tool like this where you don't have to worry about fixing topology of the, all of the time can be really awesome. Editing the boolean is possible in Blender but as long as you are using the modifier. If you are a Blender user like me then you'll feel right at home as a lot of the hard keys are the same as Blender. The viewport also feels very familiar to Blender and you can even choose the Blender navigation preset from the preferences. Honestly that... Eh? Honestly, whenever I tried learning a new software, the thing that hurts my brain the most is trying to switch between the two different navigation styles of the software. My muscle memory would make me use the Blender shortcut keys in the new software and whenever I switched back to Blender after learning the new software, I'd use the new software's shortcuts in Blender. So having this option in plasticity really saves my CPU from overheating. I mean my brain. <laughs> it was a joke. As a Blender user, you'll love the Blender Bridge feature even more. In Plasticity, make sure the server is enabled in the Preferences. Then in Blender, install the official Blender Bridge add-on, then hit Connect. All of the models from Plasticity will be brought into Blender. You even have the option of Live Link. Any changes you make in Plasticity will be automatically applied in Blender. How cool is that? This feature is available in both the Indie and the Studio license, however you cannot try it on the free trial. The other day I saw an amazing artist live modeling in Plasticity and have it rigged and textured in Blender. Wow! If you want to learn Plasticity, I'll leave some really great resources and free channels to learn from in the description down below, so make sure to check those out if you're interested. There's also a really cool feature called sweep. If you've got multiple different shapes, it can just merge through all of them, which is insane and it feels illegal. <laughs> One of the best features in plasticity is the X knobs feature, which is only available in the studio version. If you've got some curves that need to be closed, you can just select them and it fills them really nicely. Doing this is possible without X knobs using the default loft and patch tools available in all of the licenses. But a lot of times X knobs provides a lot better looking results. It needs less tweaking and it can do things that are not possible with the default tools, at least not in a straightforward way. But with this tool, you just select the curves and guides and it takes care of the rest. There are situations where it doesn't work well and can give wonky looking results. But that's mostly due to the fact that I don't know how to use the tool well enough. But I have seen people using this tool really well. I'm telling you this so you don't get frustrated when things don't work out the way we expect them to. Even though it might look very intuitive and easy to use, doesn't mean it wouldn't require any extra effort. What's most surprising about plasticity is its price, which is only $149 at the time of recording this video. Not a subscription, but a lifetime purchase. And you get updates up to 12 months. I know you guys will be like, my even cheaper than that is Blender which is free. I know, <laughs> I know, okay? The only thing that is free and amazing at the same time is Blender. And my tutorials as well. <laughs> you also get access to their Discord server where you can ask questions, share your work and get feedback. There is a 30 day free trial which is great if you want to try out the software before buying. The studio license, costing around $299 at the time of recording this video, 
has an extra feature called XNOPS, which we just talked about, but you also get access to their beta program allowing you to recommend what features to add in plasticity. If you are on a tight budget, then the indie license is more than enough. For comparison, most of the CAD modeling programs cost an arm and a leg, and even then, they're mostly subscription based. The XNOPS feature available in Plasticity is actually a third party plugin for most of the CAD modeling programs, which alone costs around $500 to $700. You can get the same feature in Plasticity by paying around $150. If you decide to buy Plasticity, use the coupon code CGOBAD to get 10% off on your order. If you use this coupon code, I'll also get a small percentage of the money that you pay to Plasticity without having you to pay any extra amount and it will really help support me. Now those were all of the things that I love about the software. Now let's talk about some of the disadvantages and the things that I don't like about the software. So as I was editing the video, I just found out that there's a brand new version of the app coming very soon with a completely changed UI and newly added features. So there's a chance that some of the issues that I'm mentioning here should have been fixed by the time you're watching the video. So make sure to look out for that and now let's get back to the video. The app is still in early development and a lot of the drawbacks that I'm mentioning here should be fixed in the future. The models look great in plasticity, but after they've been exported, the topology isn't really good. They do look good, but the topology is not very nice. And there's not much you can do unless you do retopologizing. So it's best to make all of the changes to your model before exporting. Now there are times the bevels don't work well. There are fixes for that as well, but it just needs some extra steps. But a lot of the times the bevels work really well. Now the app is very clean, simple and user friendly, but it lacks the customizability. I wish if there were more features available in the preferences. There is no key map section to find and assign shortcuts. You can press the F key, search for actions and assign shortcuts to them, but it would be nice to have a key map section in the preferences. One of the most annoying things I find in the app is that any action I do, I have to confirm it either by clicking the right mouse button or the inner key. Even for the simplest things as moving an object, I have to confirm that. In Blender, you just do it and it's done. You can undo if you wanted to. So I think it comes down to the personal preference. So it would be great to have a toggle button for this in the preferences. A lot of the times I have a very strong urge just to move around and rotate faces, but in a lot of the cases it's not possible because it's CAD modeling. I think it's just me wanting to have both the features of Polygon and CAD modeling, which I don't think is really possible. One of the things that I like the most about Blender is its modifiers. I can't live without modifiers. Maybe a little too much. I cannot use Blender without modifiers. Yeah, that's a bit better. What's great with modifiers is that they are non-destructive, meaning you can get back to the original mesh, make changes and the modifiers will take care of the rest. One downside to plasticity is its destructive nature. There's still flexibility like changing the bevels and moving around the booleans. But for example, when I've rotated an object, I can clear the rotation which can be really annoying, say if I wanted to get back to the original rotation of the object. Once I've created an array of objects, I can modify the distance and the amount of objects. There are no modifiers in plasticity. Maybe there are no modifiers in CAD modeling? I don't know, I'm still very new to CAD modeling. But for the very least, it would be great to have the feature of an active mirror modifier in plasticity because every time you make changes to one side of the model, you have to press Alt X and mirror the model. Now I'm not saying that plasticity is better than Blender. The two cannot be compared. One is a complete 3D package with features like 3D modeling, texturing, shading, rendering, animation, and features like modeling, sculpting, texturing, animation, rigging, and rendering, while the other is mainly made for hard surface modeling. Things like machines, robots, and man-made objects. 
It can also do some smooth curvature objects like cars, hair dryers, trimmers, etc. But for organic things like plants, humans, creatures, it's best to use polygonal modeling techniques and the sculpting tools which are present in Blender. A lot of things are easier to make in Blender due to the variety of tools and techniques Blender has to offer, but for some things with lots of bevels and complex designs can be easier to do in plasticity. I just using Blender by so many add-ons, so think of this as a modeling add-on too, and it's worth it for what it provides. I'm not switching to plasticity, but rather I'm adding it to my toolset. I know it's not a fair comparison to compare Blender and plasticity. A fair comparison would be with CAD modeling programs like AutoCAD, Fusion 360, SolidWorks, Rhino, I don't know, I haven't had any experience in any other CAD modeling programs. But what I do know is that plasticity costs a fraction of what the other CAD modeling programs cost and it's very easy and beginner friendly to use. While there are some flaws in the software and there aren't as many tools, please note that this is still an early app. I think it's great to have a tool like this that we can mostly focus on the design without having to worry about fixing topology all of the time. There is a 30 day free trial so give it a try and decide it for yourself. If you end up deciding to buy it, please use my coupon code to get 10% off while also supporting me. So that's that for this video, please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and hit the subscribe button if you like 3D and Blender content. I'll be back.